So well, I'd like to welcome everyone to the first ever virtual cast division banquet. Uh, as far as I've been a member, I've never seen anything like this. And the internet was invented after that. So I know that this is the first virtual cast division banquet. And it's traditional. Welcome everyone, by the way, from all over the world. Uh, my name is Jay Lee. I'm, I've been the chair of the cast division for this year. And it's traditional for the chair to give a brief overview of the year to start off the banquet, which is what I'm about to do. So the news of this year, well, the Cambridge Dic Dictionary couldn't pick a single word that represented this word, but to me, it's the Corona virus, uh, which hampered us in many ways in terms of uh, social distancing and not being able to travel, having travel, travel ban. And uh, that led us to have for one thing, AICHE meetings, uh, both meetings vir in virtual way, as well as meetings like the IPEC World Congress, uh, which was supposed to be held in Berlin, was also held virtually. So uh, it's been an extraordinary year, very challenging year in many ways. The XCOM met many, many times to discuss how uh, we can have this. Uh, still have this event. And we decided that it would be better to have this after the AISHE meeting so that everybody will feel more comfortable and relaxed. Okay, uh, yeah, besides the meetings, but uh, you know, there's the online stuff. Uh, so uh, social media and webcasts led by Ashley and John have been very active, as you can see here. And the young professional, um, you know, obviously no annual meetings, so no major activities. Uh, one news, uh, news of the YP side is that Alexander Dowling of Notre Dame has agreed to take over Fanny's position starting 2021. And already Fanny and Alex got together to organize an event for this AICHE meeting and play fun games and breakout discussions and so on, which uh, Alex will present to us uh, a little bit later. Now, uh, what was it that usually said? We started out with some money, we spent some money and we have some money left over. So this is how much money we have left over, 66,212, uh, which is more than what we started out. So that's always good. Uh, it does not include a world sponsorship or costs. So there will be, after this, it will be a little bit lower than this, I suppose. Uh, so we lost the ExxonMobil sponsorship because of the company's uh, financial situation. But uh, that was more than offset by this year's banquet not being held virtually that we didn't have to subsidize it. Now, in terms of the membership, uh, Obviously, a year like this, we expect the membership to go down a bit, and it did by about 10%. And you know, this is kind of the distribution. I think senior here doesn't mean that like really old, but just the senior members, you know, in terms of status-wise. And in terms of age, it's, it's a little bit concerning that uh, young people's Young, young uh, members' numbers are dropping, as well as the industrial members' numbers are dropping. So that's a challenge that I couldn't address uh, this year, but hopefully the next uh, chair and the uh, XCOM will, will, will take a look at. And there's other uh, distributions, members by location, members by ethnicity, members by gender. We are losing male members, not female members. Uh, and uh, members who are, who are not paying is going up, 
which is not good news. <laughs> and you can see in terms of members, um, you know, by far, uh, by and large, it's the academic members that dominate and some from petro petroleum production and refining and so on. But, uh, you know, a lot of other industries out there. So it's a challenge for us to attract uh, members from new industries. Now, in terms of the leadership, uh, Maravellius Christos uh, has been the past chair. And I've been the chair, Mario, has been the first vice chair, will become the chair next year. Second vice chair, Martha Grover, and secretary treasurer, John Sorora. And the directors are shown here. And we had elections, and we have a new second vice chair for 2021. Matt Bassett has been elected. And two new directors, Benny Ukvala and Crisantos Gunaris. And then there are some additional members like programming chairs who did a lot of work this year because of the complications. Uh, Alexander Mitsos, li liaison from the AICG side, webcast, list server, social media, YP liaison, and web manager. Uh, thank, you for, thank you all for your tremendous service. Okay, that's all I have to say. Uh, at this point, let me turn this over to Martha Grover now, who will uh, be the MC of this awards ceremony. Hello, everyone. Great to see you all. And I'm I'm first going to turn the virtual podium over to Alex Dowling to give an update on our YP activities. Hello, everyone. So I'll be taking over as the academic liaison for the young professionals. Um, last week, we had a, a, a Zoom event where about 60 people came. Um, so uh, can you go to the next slide? So we had a fun, fun breakout where we sent everyone to, to small rooms in groups of two to four. And as an icebreaker said, write a short abstract and title for AICHA next year that uses the most buzzwords possible. So I'm gonna do the two joke awards before Martha gets into the real awards. So Martha, if you could advance. All right, so the award for funniest um, goes to this group here. Uh, and there was a theme of a, a lot about iPoster. So I'll give you about 10 seconds to, to kind of read through uh, the abstract. So here, here, this group is, yeah, we had to shorten it for, for time, but they proposed the Quagmire NN to uh, do a better job than, than I post her next year. Um, Martha, if you wanna go to the next one. And then the most realistic, um, this, this was pretty fun, uh, process intensification using quantum computing and machine learning under uncertainty. And as I was reading this, I thought I was on an NSF panel. <laughs> um, so thank you for, for all the YPs that participated. Uh, for everyone here, um, if you know any YPs for all the faculty, encourage your graduate students just to sign up for the CAST mailing list. That's the best way to, to, to stay in touch with us. All right, that's it. Okay, thanks so much, Alex. And uh, now I'd like to get into the CAST 2020 Division Awards. Um, this year, Alex and I helped to judge the Undergraduate Poster Award at the AICHE Student Conference. And the winners are Stephen Quinton from the University of Southern California and Maya Desai from Rowan University. So we're pleased to present each of them with a $100 award from CAST. Um, next, I'd like to uh, recognize the 2020 Graduate Student Best Presentation Finalists Akil Aurora, David Bernal, Natalie Eisenberg, Georgios Macrogeorgios, Matthew Pulse, Sungho Shin, Yuhi Ten, and Radha Krishna, Tumbalam Guti. And the winner is Sungho Shin from the University of Wisconsin, working with Victor Zavala. 
for the presentation, a new decomposition paradigm or large scale optimization. So congratulations, Song Ho. Uh, and we'll be happy to recognize you with a plaque at next year's CAST banquet. Um, I'd also like to announce the 2020 Director's Awards for uh, the outstanding poster at this meeting. Berku Bakal from Texas A&M and Kevin Silmore from MIT. So congratulations. And again, uh, CAST will be very pleased uh, to recognize you with a plaque at next year's CAST banquet uh, and to provide you with a ticket to the banquet. Um, so uh, last year's winners are to be then recognized at this year's banquet uh, and um, last year's best student presentation award first place went to Wen Tao Tang from the University of Minnesota data driven dissipativity based control. So uh, Wen Tao was able to come to the banquet last year and uh, here is his uh, plaque, uh, which will be in the mail shortly. And second place last year for the best student presentation award went to uh, Chi Chen from Carnegie Mellon University, PioSim, a collaborative ecosystem to advance process design. So uh, congratulations to Chi as well. And last year's best poster award uh, was awarded to Andrew Radcliffe from Purdue University, development of an image analysis tool for high speed imaging data in a dropwise additive manufacturing process. So congratulations, Andrew. Um, and we're glad that our uh, student winners could join us at the banquet this year to be recognized. Next, I would like to thank our, uh, our division chair uh, for the Excellence and Service to Division Award to Jay Lee from KAIST. And it has been my great pleasure to work with Jay in this, in this role again, um, and uh, to, to uh, be back together with my Georgia Tech colleague and uh, longtime supporter. So I've really enjoyed working with you, Jay, and we all very much appreciate your service to CAST. So thank you very much. And we are very happy to present you with this plaque. And here also is just a gratuitous picture with my daughter, but we all appreciate your support of us over the years. Um, and she also worked hard to help take all these pictures of the plaques. <laughs> so next I'd like to move on to our cast division awards. The David Smith Award, um, we have two winners. Uh, the first uh, is Camille Khan from McMaster University for his paper, A Vector Forward Mode of Automatic Differentiation for Generalized Derivative Evaluation. Congratulations, Camille. And uh, the second award goes to Blake Rawlings from Sandia National Laboratory, Falsification of Combined Invariance and Reachability Specifications in Hybrid Control Systems. So the David, W. David Smith Award is sponsored by Process Systems uh, Enterprise. And so we thank PSE very much for their sponsorship of this award, continued sponsorship. Congratulations to Blake. The David Himmelblau Award goes to Daniel E. Rivera from Arizona State University for contributions to computer-based process control education with emphasis on MATLAB-based and interactive tools for control-relevant system identification and controller tuning education. Congratulations, Daniel. And Daniel will be giving uh, the Himmelblau Award webcast um, in, in the CAST webcast uh, series on February 23rd. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, on the topic, teaching system identification to chemical engineers. Congratulations, Daniel. The Outstanding Young Researcher Award goes to Ruth Meissner from Imperial College for developing fundamental contributions to mixed integer nonlinear optimization, connections between PSE and state-of-the-art computer science, and applications to bioprocess and energy efficiency. This award is sponsored by Air Products and Chemicals. Congratulations, Ruth. 
And Ruth has also uh, prepared this thank you slide uh, for, uh, uh, to thank her supporters. The Computing Practice Award uh, recognizes an individual for outstanding contribution to practice and application of chemical engineering, computing systems and technology sponsored by Aspen Technology and uh, over the years long support from ExxonMobil. And this year goes to John Sirola from Sandia National Laboratory for empowering researchers and practitioners worldwide to develop and share process systems engineering expertise through the open source modeling platform, Pyomo. So congratulations to John Sirola. And finally, the Computing and Chemical Engineering Award sponsored by the Dow Chemical Company is awarded this year to Mahmoud el -Wagi from Texas A&M University for the development and application of pioneering and high impact contributions in the area of sustainable design through process integration and intensification. So congratulations, Mahmoud, and we look forward to your award lecture. Um, but first, I'm very happy to introduce Stratos Pistikopoulos to uh, provide an introduction to your seminar. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And uh, first of all, my warmest congratulations to all the winners. We have had a, a group of excellent nominees and excellent winners. So, and I'm very proud now to, and very happy to present uh, the winner and the recipient of the 2020 Computing and Chemical Engineering Award. Now, for those of you who may not know Professor Mahmoud El Khavaki, he comes from the country of Egypt, you know, and Egyptians, and especially are very well known for their civilization, early, you know, uh, the great heritage for, that comes to the world, the modern world from uh, Egypt. And uh, basically, they excelled a lot in chemistry and, the, and engineering, which was the prelude of chemical engineering. And the recent archaeological discoveries here on the left, you can see, unravel some chief engineer, a chief engineer with two of his kids. And the resemblance is quite obvious, I think. So uh, they look like modern day Egyptians. So Mahmoud is very much connected through his family to chemical engineering. Here on the left, you can see an early Dr. El Khalbaki. That's his grandfather, who was in charge of the crude oil refining in Egypt. Then he's here, you can see the family moved to the US, where his father got a PhD in chemical engineering from the University of Maryland. And that's where Mahmoud was born. So you can see here Mahmoud in some early stages, you know, trying new chemical engineering principles, no doubt. Then his father, you know, after the retirement, they went back, the, the family went back to Cairo. And you can see here Mahmoud with his parents overlooking Cairo, you know, having a nice dinner there. And then, sorry, let me. And then here you can see his father worked very hard in Egypt to advance scientific research and sustainability, both regionally and international. He's portrayed here with Al Gore at an event in Egypt. The other important facet of Mahmoud, you know, for those who know him, is that he's a very devoted family person. And from his early years, he made the right structural choice Design is very important to Mahmoud. He got married to a chemical engineering classmate, Amal. You can see him there. And then they had two children. They have two very, you know, grown up now children, Omar and Ali. It's interesting to know that uh, Ali got first a chemical engineering degree before becoming a doctor. And then uh, Omar, you always need a lawyer in the family. So he became a lawyer. So you can see him for various instances. It's here from the wedding, recent wedding from Ali 
from the various uh, uh, from the uh, medical school as well as uh, graduation a very happy uh, family indeed now to more action points in Mahmoud's career here is the he started his he did his undergraduate degree at the University of Kauri University and in fact his master thesis was under uh, the supervision of uh, Professor Mahmoud El Rifai, and they worked on the mathematical modeling of catalytic fluidized bed reactors. And here is a publication from Chemical Engineering Science. Then he went in uh, to, U, uh, to University uh, to, Univ to UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, where he did his PhD with Professor Vasilius Manishudakis, and it's, and he worked on the synthesis on a pioneering topic of the synthesis of mass exchange networks. That was one, this is one of the most highly cited papers which really opened up the field of the integration of process, heat, mass, and so forth. And it's interesting to note, you know, so the, that uh, if you look at the academic trip that uh, Mahmoud originates, it's, uh, you, uh, Vasilis was a PhD student of Yaman, so they come from the academic trip of Prof. Professor George Stefanopoulos, and if you go back, Art Westerberg, and inevitably part of the Sergeant, Professor Roger Sargent academic trip. So it's interesting to look and important to look at the scholarly contributions. This is, after all, an award that uh, awards excellence in all the dimensions and facets of uh, process systems engineering. So after his PhD studies, Mahmoud went first to Auburn and then to Texas A&M, where he has been pioneering over the years sustainable design through process integration. He has refereed over 500 uh, journal papers and book chapters. He has really worked on you know, promoting the profession both on research and education through books. He has three textbooks, and it's interesting to see that they have been also translated in Korean and Chinese. Uh, he has uh, been an excellent, not only scholar, but an excellent teacher. Uh, and this is reflected to more than 20 teaching awards. Uh, he has super, you know, he has taught to over 2,000 undergraduate students. He's still teaching. Uh, relentlessly over the years. He has received prestigious research awards, a lot of uh, outcome from his research lab with 53 PhD students, 56 master's students, 50 visiting uh, scholars and so forth. So uh, I had the pleasure of, uh, and here you can see also his uh, current research uh, group. I had the pleasure of serving as Mahmoud nomination for the CAS award. And here you can see and enjoy some of the quotes from the package by leading scholars. I would like to highlight this one, which I believe really portrays Mahmoud the best. He's one of the most original thinkers and pioneering academic researchers that I have known with creative problem formulations and engineering solutions methodologies. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me warmly welcome Professor Mahmoud El Khalvaki for the Computing and Chemical Engineering Award with the citation saying for the development and application of pioneering and high impact contributions in the area of sustainable design through process integration and specification. Professor Mahmoud El Khalvaki. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Pistikopoulos, uh, for this very kind and, uh, and heartwarming introduction. Uh, it's a tough act to follow, and I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm also very grateful uh, to the CAST uh, division uh, and to the sponsor, Dow Chemical. I'm uh, truly privileged and honored and very appreciative of the award. And uh, to all those who are joining from around the world, uh, thank you for joining. And depending on your time zone, uh, good morning, good afternoon, 
good evening and good night. I appreciate you joining. And uh, now let me I'll, uh, turn off the video camera and I'll uh, start sharing the screen. Greetings, everyone. I'm delighted and, and honored uh, to give the 2020 Computing and Chemical Engineering Award presentation on a topic that is very close to my heart, which is sustainable design through multi-scale process integration. At present, uh, humanity faces uh, really the grand challenge of sustainability and sustainable development. The symptoms of a lack of sustainability are abundant, including fresh water shortage to the AICHE CAS division for honoring me with this award. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud, for that really inspiring lecture and very clear. There's been great interest in the chat in, in obtaining these materials for instructional purposes. And um, I think they'll be so useful to so many and we appreciate your making them available on YouTube through the web webcast. So John Hedengren is making those available to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Martha, Mario, uh, uh, John uh, and Jay. I I know there has been tremendous work behind the scene. I'm very grateful for uh, all of that. I'm also very grateful to everyone who has joined at odd uh, times of the uh, day. And I also appreciate the interest in using this uh, for educational purposes. As, as many of my academic colleagues uh, here can attest, this is an extremely important part of our profession. And it is most rewarding when we can link our research activities also with our education and activity. So I really appreciate the opportunity and appreciate the interest and I'm most grateful uh, for, for this award. Thank you very much. Thank you. We do have, we have a question here in, in, the, in the chat. Um, so I mean, we can, if people have questions, feel free to ask questions. Um, a, a question. Uh, who pays for the sustainable design process when you have many companies involved? It could impact one company more than another. Do you have any yeah. comments about that? This is an excellent uh, question. Uh, so to begin with, the situation must be a win-win situation for this uh, to work. It cannot be forced, it cannot be imposed. And therefore, only participants who will benefit from this should be part of, uh, of the uh, eco-industrial park. Now you can look at it from at least a couple of perspectives. One is the collective perspective where uh, all the companies benefit and so they have some sort of shared resources and shared benefits. And in some cases, they may be actually owned by the same parent company or actually may be owned by a state. In some states, uh, there are countries that have majority share in all uh, uh, plans. But also it can work. Uh, through the initiation of a single company. So if a single company deems that there are opportunities for getting resources from the other companies and they pay them more than what is currently market uh, price or maybe even uh, alleviate the cost of treatment for some of their uh, waste treatment or share in the credit for reducing say carbon footprint, then it can still be driven by one company in coordination with the appropriate uh, partners. And that works both for an existing industrial city, but it even works better if uh, there is a, an initiative to create an industrial city so that you can uh, select carefully, not just the initial anchors, but also the subsequent tenants who will benefit from this symbiosis. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Another question in the chat from Richard. 
Bratz, how to incorporate innovation in a systematic approach to process intensification. Maybe you can, maybe you can read it. Yes. We can all read it. You have some comments about Richard's question. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is really an important point uh, towards the path for uh, innovation. And, and before I, I get into answering this, let me just uh, state something that I heard repeatedly from uh, colleagues in industry. They often uh, tell me that unless you come back with a design that will save us at least 20, 25, 30%, then we're not interested in rocking the boat. We would like to see substantial savings for various objectives. And therefore, you know, if you go back with a one or two, 3% uh, change, there is probably a lot of resistance to, uh, to implement. The other thing is that there is indeed a synergistic relationship between the systems work and both the experimental work and also the industrial uh, work. And there has to be coordination both ways. We have to accept that we cannot have, we cannot generate all those uh, extraordinary designs with uh, paradigm shifts without first proving the concept and getting proper data from our experimental colleagues and industrial colleagues. So it has to really go uh, both ways. When there are alignments and partnerships like this, then it is likely to have implementations, but it cannot be driven by one community and, it, and then complain uh, because, oh, the world is not heeding our advice. They are not taking uh, this. And again, there has to be some substantial improvement over existing designs. Well, thank you again, Mahmoud. And thank you to everyone who came to the CAST banquet. There are 112 people here at the end. <laughs> So that's a that's a wonderful turnout, and um, you know we all we all really stayed and enjoyed your your lecture. So um, thank you all for supporting you know this cast banquet in this very unusual year, and hope to see you in Boston next year. Congratulations, Mahmoud. Thank thank you very much, and. Uh, Next time we meet face to face, dinner is on me. We'll take you up on that. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all the award winners. Stay safe, everybody. Have a happy Thanksgiving for those of you who are in the U.S. Uh, same to you. Happy Thanksgiving. Congratulations, Professor Agi. Thank you very much for joining. I appreciate it. <laughs> Hope to see you again. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Mario, for having me. No problem. Thank you. Good to see you, Danny. Bye, Danny. Take care. Bye. Did you have a question, Richard? You were muted. I just say we have a cash meeting soon, so I guess I'll see you guys there. So <laughs> yeah. Hi, Richard. <clears throat> that is, is that next week? <laughs> that is next week. It is next week. That's right. So, all right. Well, it looks like I can turn off the recording. I'll let that process, and I'll send a. Uh, uh, a Dropbox link to the, uh, I guess the executive committee, John will figure out what to, what to do with it if we want to post the entire thing or something like that. Yeah.
So yeah. uh, thanks you know, for moderating everything, Martha. Appreciate it very much. Sure. And thanks for setting up Zoom. And I, so I you know, that was something I didn't have to worry about. So that no was worries. Great. Actually, I think that worked pretty well. I mean, yeah. you know, we were up to close to 150 at one point and, and, you know, then had a little bit of a drop off. But I think, I mean, everyone that, uh, that was able to join us did and everyone else is going to be able to have access to it afterwards. So I think that worked out great. We need to think about how to do this when we have in-person meetings, if there's a way to share the award lecture, um, you know, afterwards anyway. I mean, uh, you have to have a camera, right? But yeah. I mean, you know, you can have a webcam, you know, it doesn't- I mean, in principle, I would think if we, if we just had a, uh, a microphone and basically set up a Zoom meeting without broadcasting it live, we could record it right there with the voiceover live and just, you know, yes. post Agreed. the video afterwards. Agreed. So, Agreed. But. Agreed. It's not so important to see the speaker. In fact, you know, we didn't see Mahmoud, so no. it doesn't, you, you, people are looking at the slides. I agree. If you just record the screen with yeah. audio. Uh, it's something to think about for next year for sure. Hopefully we'll be doing it in person, but it'd still be nice, still be nice to be able to share it with the rest of the community. So